Saima, I am here. Okay. Hello, good morning. I am Dr. Ijaz, one of the doctors in uh, GP surgery. Hello. How can I help you? Uh, well, doctor, uh, I am calling you to talk about some problem. I am feeling uh, a bit funny nowadays. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, could you please confirm your uh, name and age for me? Yeah, sure, doctor. My name is Michelle and I'm 52 years old. Okay. Nice uh, talking to you, Michelle. And the phone you are calling me, if by any chance call drops, so the, is this the correct line? I should call you back on the same line? Yeah, sure, doctor. You can. Okay. Uh, okay, how uh, you told me, could you please uh, let me know a little in detail so that I can understand your situation? Yeah, sure, doctor. Um, actually, doctor, nowadays, I, I'm feeling not myself. You know, I have a very rough patch uh, with my husband nowadays. I mm -hmm. always feel anxious. I, mm -hmm. I can't sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. and I just don't know what is happening to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Michelle, this is happening for the first time in your life. Yeah, absolutely. It, this is happening to me for the very first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just please bear with me. I'll uh, just ask a few questions so that I can understand your situation uh, better and I can help you in more uh, meaningful way. Is that okay sure, with doctor. you? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, okay. You told me you are not feeling in your senses. And you told me you have some vague, uh, I mean, complaints like uh, irritability and these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, since uh, how long actually you are having this problem? I'm feeling this way for the last four to five months. My husband says that I'm not myself. I mm -hmm. well, uh, you know, I fight with him a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I just can't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm feeling really, really anxious. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel as if my head is burning, my face mm -hmm. is burning. I don't know what is happening to me. Maybe because of anxiety, I just mm -hmm. don't know what is happening to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see you are really concerned about this, and uh, your concerns are very genuine. Anyone uh, feeling these kind of abnormal uh, feelings would be feeling like this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you told me this is since last quite some time, few months. And over the period of time, have you felt uh, any change in this? Uh, yeah, doctor. I mean, it is getting worse. It, uh, before, it was just uh, for a few days. Uh, but then it, I started feeling this way all the time. So mm -hmm. it is getting worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. And have you noticed, uh, uh, I mean, anything giving you any relief? No. Mm -hmm. or have you noticed the other way, anything uh, increasing your problem? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. And have you done anything for this? I mean, you have taken any medicine or over the counter something? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just... I just don't know what is happening to me. I am not in pain. I, I just don't know what is happening to me. So I mm -hmm. haven't taken any medications. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I can understand. Okay, could you please recall anything, I mean, uh, unusual which led to this condition six months before? Uh, my periods are a bit irregular nowadays, doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last two months I haven't uh, bled. I just don't know if that's relevant or not, but uh, this is the only thing I can remember. Yeah, yeah, it could be, it could be. Uh, okay, I'll uh, just bear with me. I'll ask you more questions and then I'll be in a position to explain to you what is going on, right? Okay. Okay, uh, you told me you, you are having, not having your periods regular. So is there uh, any uh, abnormal bleeding? I mean, in no. between the cycle or anything? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, any unusual feeling, burning sensation while passing urine? No. Mm -hmm. Any tummy pain? 
No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whom you are living with, uh, uh, Michelle? I live with my husband and he is really annoyed with me, doctor, nowadays. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I can understand. Okay. Uh, this question might feel a little odd, but uh, uh, don't worry. This is actually, we all uh, ask all patients in this situation, right? Okay. So whatever we are discussing, this is uh, something I've been confidential between you and our team. Right. Okay. Okay. Do you have any problem with, uh, I mean, in sexual life with your husband these days, especially? Um, doctor, uh, well, I believe a vaginal dryness is something I can remember. And we are not mm -hmm. having very good relationship nowadays. So we are not quite, you know, meeting each other. Yeah, but I can. I can. I feel vaginal dryness a lot nowadays. Yeah, I can see. Okay, and any uh, post? Uh, I mean, uh, once you are finished with the sexual intercourse, is there any bleeding? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. By any means, you are having any other medical condition? No. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm getting late, but anyways, okay. Uh, you are taking any medicines on a regular basis? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michelle, thank you so much for answering all my questions. It was quite an uh, exhaustive interview, but uh, uh, I would like to have a look upon you. Uh, is that okay with you? Uh, do I need to come to the hospital for that, doctor? Yeah, ideally, if uh, you can spare some time and can come to the hospital, that would be a wonderful thing. But uh, right now, what I think, uh, I mean, looking upon your age, and all your symptoms, this condition is very common in ladies in this age. This, uh, we call it very menopausal symptoms. Have you heard of this before? Um, well, my, recently I have heard about it from my friend, but mm -hmm. I don't know about that this is a symptom. Yeah, because uh, menopause is uh, one, of, one important event in every female's life. A time comes when you uh, stop uh, having your cycles, right? Okay. So at that point, you know, there are a lot of hormonal changes in your body. Mm -hmm. So okay, doctor. yeah, if you can spare some time and can come here, we will run a blood test for you. We will check your hormone levels and we will address all concerns, especially the thing which you have told me about your marital relation being uh, disturbed due to your uh, physical problems. Like you told me, you have vaginal dryness. We can give you a uh, vaginal cream. You can use it uh, while being with uh, with your husband. How does uh, this feel to you? On to the next station. Okay. Uh, if I had time, I would just ask uh, hormone replacement therapy and something, but I wasted time in data gathering. Anyways, thank you so much. No problem. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Oh, Dr. Charles, please tell me first that what do you think? What are your mistakes apart from long data gathering? Actually, I repeated the uh, same information at a couple of times. One. Mm -hmm. Secondly, mm -hmm. while talking, I uh, made long sentences in st instead of asking a simple question. I mm -hmm. kind of tried to be indirect, something like that. And then I didn't have time to explore the past history. Okay. And I did not touch upon your mood because you were telling me time and again that you are having irritable uh, mood and your husband and I mean, your domestic life, married life is disturbed. Uh -huh. I must, must have asked, I should not have missed the mood and depression thing. Absolutely. So these are the few things which I was feeling, but when these were the late recalls and I was just feeling like what to do though, okay, I missed, what can I do? I couldn't go okay. back because time was running very fast. Yeah. So Don't these are- Dr. Uh, it I believe that it's the first time you have uh, seen a uh, menopause patient and uh, being uh, for uh, experience, you have, this is your first experience regarding the station, am I right? Uh, Dr. Saima, to tell you the truth, actually, this is for the first time in eight minutes scenario, maybe. And uh, okay. doing it in, okay. in a, a kind of uh, like exam uh, situation. Otherwise, in normal clinics, I have seen these patients. Okay. 
Well, Dr. Jaz, in that case, you should uh, practice with some study partner or take regular mocks with someone uh, mm -hmm. so that you get uh, an idea or uh, you get that uh, idea that uh, uh, how you should plan your eight minutes because mm -hmm. it's really important for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, please have a study partner if you can't find any you can yeah. uh, always uh, uh, you know uh, have uh, send a message in any of the group whatsapp group we have and uh, you might find some uh, study partner otherwise yeah, yeah. Uh, actually i have i am doing uh, with uh, yeah. quite a number of people yeah. but uh, these are the my weaknesses everyone is telling me and i'm trying my i mean on my end but still i'm lacking in these areas no problem, Dr. Jazz. Good luck to you and uh, please practice a lot. Uh, if you have an idea about the about the station, then you only thing you have to do is to practice. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I will start talking about the station. This is a comparatively new station that is menopause. But uh, Dr. Simon, uh, just if you can give me, I mean, other than this, uh, what were my mistakes? Well, regarding your if... mistakes. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Ajaz, uh, your first mistake was uh, that in the beginning you didn't realize that it, I told you that it was a telephonic station. You have to, you had to confirm my first line of address. You had to confirm my date of birth, and your, uh, uh, your, uh, the way you opened the, uh, the station was not appropriate. This, uh, you uh, regarding the telephonic stations, there is a certain way you start talking. For example, when you will enter the cubicle, there will be uh, a telephone placed on the table in front of you and you have to sit on the chair and uh, when you start talking the line is all uh, is connected okay so you say okay. hello hello there dr sam bakhtawar uh, 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 speaking may I, am I may i know am i speak whom i'm speaking to or if you are confident you can say may i know am i speaking to uh, sara or who, whatever the name is mentioned okay may i speak to michelle benedict Oh, yes, doctor, I am speaking very well. Michelle, can, uh, can you, will you please give me a moment? I have to confirm a few important information, and then we will talk further. Is that okay? Yes, doctor. Well, can you please confirm your first line of address and date of birth for me? Yes, doctor, my first line of address is 3 Wood Park Street, Bolton, and uh, I am 52 years old. Okay, so Michelle, tell me, how can I help you? This is the way you will uh, and you fill in the or you can ask in case the call drops can i call you back on this number uh she will tell you yes doctor you can and if you are calling uh and it is mentioned outside that you are calling you will ask an additional question that uh is it the right time to talk to you for example in breaking bad news stations you are calling uh, 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 uh to that person so you will ask is it the right time to talk these are the four questions that you have to ask in first 30 seconds and you have to complete your introduction within the 30 seconds. Only then you will be able to move forward uh, with your telephone stations in a very, very good manner and you will be in control. Okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, can I disturb? Can I interrupt you right now? Actually, I yeah. knew this thing, but yeah. <clears throat> because my understanding was Michelle is calling me. So that's why I omitted asking about uh, the address line. In, if, if still because the if patient still. herself is calling mm -hmm. to the GP surgery mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. and are, I, hmm. Hmm. okay okay just you know this clap to exam is a very very straightforward exam mm -hmm. this is this in this exam you don't need to uh, I would say that you don't need to devise your own system or, or, or your own way of doing things you have to do it the way Written, uh, written doctors are doing it in NHS. In NHS, they confirm the first line of address and date of birth with every patient or with every person who is talking on the phone. It's not in just in the NHS. For every telephonic consultation, for example, if a teacher is calling from the school uh, to, the, to a parent, she will also confirm uh, that uh, first line of address and in case the call drops, can I call you back on this number? Okay. And they okay, also confirm the identity. Okay, they mm. also confirm the identity. It is really, really important uh, because this is the way they are doing it, and we have to be a part of that system. We have we have to show that we are well aware of their system and the methods they are using. So we just mm -hmm. don't need to, you know, make a, a system of our own or make a change in it. 
we just have to adapt to that and make sure that we are a very good doctor or safe doctor to practice within their system mm -hmm. okay. yeah i agree with you actually uh, this uh, i myself i did not device the other day in another uh, mock like this somebody mm -hmm. other who is coaching for a lab he mentioned this thing and he told us like uh, if patient herself or himself is calling then no need to say these lines about uh, confirming address and uh, talking about the appropriate time so th this was in, in my mind that's why i admit yeah in that case there's an easy way of doing it because mm -hmm. if whatever information is mentioned in the cubicle you have there it is there for some reason okay in the in all the stations there will be a clipboard with an address and date of birth on it if you have any uh, finding that would be written if they have sent any test results uh, and you have to talk about the test results on the phone that will be they will be, they will be mentioned uh, on the clipboard present inside the cubicle so you okay. have to talk about all the stuff that is mentioned inside the uh, uh, inside the uh, present in the, inside the cubicle and mentioned on the clipboard okay okay you just okay. can't miss okay. that for it because in everything there is a queue they also know that these are just 8 minutes and you can't you know uh, do everything in 8 minutes but still you have to follow the protocol i don't know uh, but uh, if he is calling you and the call is connected uh, mm -hmm. the method the, everyone is doing it and uh, what i know and what i have learned and what i know about it uh, uh, from their system uh, by from the people who are working there they say that this is a this is a protocol okay so if, well, if i can if someone is saying that uh, you can omit it in that case uh, uh, i don't know uh, uh, if uh, you should ask him because i believe that this is the right way if and it's up to you that whichever way you decide okay yeah you know no, no the, your uh, point of view makes sense because whatever is uh, given in the information the task statement we have to confirm this this makes yeah. sense yeah thank you so much okay and the next uh, and your next hmm. mistake was uh, after that you didn't uh, realize it well that it is a telephonic station the next thing was that your uh, ips statement question, sentences were really really long and uh, you uh, i mentioned that in the in the in the first one and a half minute that the person is having problems with the period she is 52 years old lady having irregular periods having low mood and she mentioned that i sometimes i feel that my head and my face is burning mm. this is a particular hot flush thing yeah, hot flushes yeah stop there and reflect that oh that see it seems something different we will talk about it in a moment and just move forward it shows yes. to the person who is assessing you that you have uh, picked up that verbal cue that you are coming to that point Okay. 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 So, and uh, this was really important. And afterwards, uh, regarding the management, uh, you, uh, uh, it, uh, the, the explanation of the diagnosis somehow was very, very long. And uh, regarding the management, if you have really, uh, you know, you are short of time and you are um, really in a hurry, just summarizing your management plan is something that will save you. Just summarize the important points of your management. that your manage uh, what we are what we are going to do is we are going to uh, uh, offer you some lifestyle modifications some uh, talking therapy and some hormonal medications and i will talk about all of them now you have mentioned all three and you will talk about some, one thing that you think that is the most important and you should tell her about and you will be fine because you have mentioned all three if you will mention only one thing and start talking about it and you will mm -hmm. uh, then you will be in a uh, problem okay yes yes i i got it all right so uh let's get to the presentation of the menopause and yeah. your other things will be uh, yeah you okay. You. okay okay uh okay. please uh, if you have any questions uh, i will ask you people to ask me questions at the end so uh, let this presentation get completed okay Uh, just so, one thing related to just one thing i want to add here yes, is that to can i uh, doctor uh, he uh, did not like uh, rule out the dds as well in the scenario yes yes 
the did this yeah his data gathering so, was very really long uh, and not like for example <laughs> yeah yeah yes just like for example uh, anxiety or uh, mm -hmm. uh, anxiety attacks or something it must be like covered in the dds it was yeah. like absolutely necessary right yeah absolutely dr ijaz himself mentioned that he didn't uh, he should have asked about mood and about the anxiety so he yes, already yes. knew his mistakes so that is something that's why i didn't All mention right. it okay All so right. regarding menopause uh First of all, what is menopause? I will, the men, uh, your explanation of whatever the diagnosis is, your explanation should be very, very brief and complete. And I believe that NHS website is the best source uh, to have a very simple and uh, uh, concise explanation to the diagnosis because the definitions you can say or the explanation of the diagnosis they are, they are one liner uh, on the nhs website so whenever you uh, find uh, something difficult uh, you are not able to explain the diagnosis well please uh, uh, visit the nhs website because nobody can challenge you if you are uh, saying whatever written on the nhs even if you cram it but somehow you find it difficult hard to uh, say it in your own words nobody can challenge you that you are scripted because it is written in the, on the NHS website and everyone around the globe can access that information. So uh, menopause is when a woman stops having periods and is no longer able to get pregnant naturally. And menopause is a natural part of aging that usually occurs between 45 and 50, 55 years of age as a woman's estrogen levels decline. This is the definition. This is, the, this is how you are going to explain the diagnosis. In two liner or in one liner, you can explain. You can, uh, this is the only thing that you need to talk about in menopause. Now, coming about the basic structure of the menopause station. In the data gathering, most of the time, the person, uh, uh, she is a middle uh, aged lady. Uh, she, is, she might be having low mood, she might be having anxiety, she might be having uh, the feeling of hotness. Uh, she and what you are going to do is first you are going to uh, explore the symptom, uh, explore the complaint by doing odipara. Uh, the most important thing, whenever you have a new station and you think that you have no idea on which side the things are going, please, please, please never ever uh, lose your structure of consultation because you will eventually get to the DD or the differential diagnosis, uh, di diagnosis or differential diagnosis, if you stick to your structure of consultation. Because believe me, I have said it many times in the presentations that simulators are the most scripted creatures in the GNC building. And if you stick to the structure that is mentioned uh, uh, by uh, in all the uh, academies, uh, uh, books, and uh, everywhere you will get some hint or some cue that will lead you to the diagnosis or a, a few differentials. So please don't get overwhelmed by a talking simulator because a talking simulator is far better than a simulator who is not giving you any hint, any cue, and he wants you to explore. It will lead to a long data gathering. So Dr. Simon, I hear you. Could you speak louder, please? Well, I'm speaking. Okay. Uh, Thank you. All right. Can, uh, can you hear me well? Much better. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I don't know. I'm speaking at the top of my voice. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you felt that way. Okay. I will repeat that uh, the meeting is going to end in eight minutes. So if the meeting uh, gets, uh, I will start the new meeting. Okay. Uh, afterwards, uh, after one minute is after seven minutes, it's eight minutes being shown on my meeting plan. So a menopause a lady uh, who uh, who is, you know, with the diagnosis of menopause in the uh, two station, she might be having a complaint of feeling hot, having low mood or feeling anxious, you have to explore the symptom uh, or by doing Odipa by asking Odipara questions. 
and you have to stick to your structure because even if it is a new station and you have no idea that where things are going your structure will save you because simulators they are more scripted than anyone else in the gmc building and they will give you some cue if you keep on asking the questions in a very sensitive way keeping your ips in mind and most of the time, uh, if you are asking them a very important question that anything particular happened before all, uh, all this uh, anxiety started or before uh, you start feeling this way, she will give, she will tell you that my periods are irregular or I have stopped, uh, uh, my periods have stopped and I just don't know. I don't know if it is relevant to it, but it is something there. You will say that thank you so much for sharing the information, Michelle. I will get back to you in a moment. You can go with your structure, whatever is in your mind, by past medical history and personal history, or you just stop there and ask her questions regarding menstrual history. Or the third thing and the most good approach will be, okay, thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing the information with me. I will get back to you in a moment. But before that, please tell me, apart from feeling anxious and feeling hot uh, sometimes, do you have any problems with your sleep too? Okay. Do you have any uh, uh, problems with your, you know, memorizing things nowadays? Well, it's a, a bit, you know, sensitive questions, but I'm so sorry. I have to ask you for that. But any chance, have you noticed any vaginal dryness nowadays? See, you have asked the associated symptoms because the lady has given you the menstrual period history in the very start and you have an idea. If she says yes, 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 that means that uh, she is having menopause symptoms. But sometimes her main complaint is anxiety and uh, uh, her periods are irregular or missed periods and she is not giving the, uh, uh, she doesn't have any complaint of hot flushes or vaginal dryness. Then you will ask her, okay, well, how is your mood nowadays? You can, you will uh, uh, talk about the next thing, mood, okay? And you will, she will, she might tell you that, uh, you know, I, I uh, that I am having very low mood and I'm having problems with my husband. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about it. You can explore their symptom too. But the most important things that you have to ask regarding is mood and menstrual history, whatever the main complaint is, because this station, the, it has a variation. It, she, um, she might have, uh, she might emphasize on her uh, anxiety and menstrual irregularity, or she might not emphasize on uh, uh, her anxiety. She might say that I'm feeling very hot nowadays and whenever I have that gush of hotness i just feel anxious so this is how they are the simulator mostly explains their symptoms so menstrual history and mood is really really important you have to assess and uh, regarding bds you can ask about uh, if she says that she's a low mood then depression uh, questions can be asked However, this is uh, in this in the eight minutes station. They don't. If you ask this question, anything particular happened before the symptoms started? They give you straight away history of menstrual menstrual irregularities, and they make your life easier. And uh, but you can uh, ask them about their mood and score their mood, and uh, you will be absolutely fine. In addition to that, you can ask about the past medical history and personal history, and you will ask about, you will ask some ice questions. Do you have any idea what it might be happening? And do you have any concern or expectation? But the idea question is really, really important after, uh, you know, uh, asking all the relevant questions of data gathering. Ice is really important before you move towards your uh, diagnosis and, and management. And uh, regarding the presenting complaint, there are three different types I mentioned, either if she's feeling hot and either if she, she's anxious or she is having, she's having low mood. So you have to, uh, uh, the first two and a half to three minutes, your uh, data gathering will be according to her presenting complaint. There are three different variations. However, she will give you a leading uh, uh, a hint that uh, I'm having irregular periods. And the moment she said that, please start asking questions 
of hot flushes and vaginal dryness and difficulty sleeping don't get uh, you know strand, uh, stranded in mood questions or depression questions because whatever it is it is because of the hormonal imbalance and you need to know about the associated symptoms uh because sometimes uh, the people uh, they diagnose the person with the depression and say that you are having uh, 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 you are having depression or you are having a generalized anxiety disorder and uh, she herself mentions that i am having irregular period and they don't explore it so please don't get uh, confused by that in data gathering in uh, this scenario the patient will talk Uh, a lot about his relationship problems she will talk uh, a lot about her anxiety the good thing is that you have to be active listener because she will give you a lot of cues she might not let you ask a lot of questions uh, so you have to be an active listener and you have to show empathy in the telephonic stations you know talking cross uh, cross talking is not a good idea so if she is talking please don't interrupt her no matter how important you think the question is please never ever interrupt the simulator especially in telephonic stations because there will be a havoc she will not be able to understand you and you won't be able to understand her and that will uh, you know just your part as your station let her speak listen to her really really uh uh being uh, really really attentive and you will be absolutely fine she will give you a lot of cues and if you will keep on interrupting her she will stop talking and then you have to ask a lot of questions and because there are three important dds uh the anxiety depression and menopause so you might get you know stranded um uh, you might be confused so please um, uh, be an active listener and showing empathy is really really important when you are asking questions to her and uh, 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 just a small sound like hmm oh dear hmm it is enough it's not important to say a five word sentence every time she has something really bad to tell you just a just a sound uh, uh, that shows here the 